Bear's Trap Twitter thing as well, mm. which we can talk about. Let's make sure I'm going live here. Looks like we're all set. Yeah, sweet. We're up there. All right. Okay. Everything on my computer's frozen, so that's cool. You gotta get new tech. <laughs> yeah, you do. This is my my work laptop. It's a joy. I, I, yeah, I know. Cause it, like the internet, I mean, you can. I guess you could pay out the wazoo to get like ridiculous internet, but is it partially a location internet. thing? No, mm. it's not my internet. It's not. I think it's the it, machine it probably. Be... Uh, I feel yeah, like you're I mean... always getting spinny wheels if you have multiple things open. I guess oh, that would. I've got to share thing. this on Skype before I get going though. So that everybody on the call with me can see. That seems friendly of me. Yeah, I can't hear anything. <laughs> yeah. Let's oh, share uh, Hades I mean, with sound. Yes, please. All right. That has been shared. The only sound is a chick, 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 chick sound. I'm going to make it a lot, and you guys can tell me if you hear it. Not my yep. best strike okay. background. Definitely. Good. Oh. Dana's face is in the wrong spot. How do I fix that? Wrong spot? On Not the stream, on the screen. I, mean, I have a but... second copy of you, like, in my main monitor where I need to play Hades. All right. Oh. Now let's get going. This is the story of Zagreus, who is the son of Hades, uh, trying to journey out of uh, the underworld. And we'll just leave it at that for now. Hmm. So while Spiritfarer mentions Charon and, <laughs> you know, you touches on Greek Hades. mythology, it's definitely not That's rooted right. in it. <clears throat> if you're familiar with Supergiant, this narrator will be familiar to you as well. Logan Cunningham returns in a number of roles. He's the old man in Bastion. He's the sword in Transistor. Nice. So here we go. Goodbye, Father. to hell with this place. Uh, get it? Yes, yes, very good. I'm leaving. Try to stop me. <clears throat> Ooh, I don't have anything right now. Okay, well... We'll do what we can here. This first run, I'm mostly just going to play and let us get a feel for where we're at, and we'll stop and chat during run two. This is a roguelike, so I'm meant to die and repeat the experience. But I've got quick attack, a big slam attack, I can throw my little dart. That's it for now, and a dash. Brian, I hear the game, but I'm not seeing it in Skype. I just see the title screen. Is that me? No, my screen is frozen, but I'm also I'm hearing it. But the screen is is frozen for me as well in Skype. All right, oh, okay. Give me a sec. Given that I was having tech issues, it, it honestly just has to do with how many freaking browsers I have open and how many tabs each of them has open. So right how now, how many I'm tabs do you have open? <laughs> Dana, is Which that helpful to you? Which browser are we asking you? about? <laughs> what? Does that help yeah, you? Yeah, it advanced. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay. Right now, I only have one browser open with three windows and probably about 40 tabs open. Yikes! Ordinarily, I would have three browsers running, each of which would have 40 to 80 tabs open, which is why the computer is slow. So it's not its not that I need new tech. It's that I need to close tabs. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. I've got nine open right now, and that feels excessive. So actually, I I'm actually going to raise the game sound a little bit before I keep going. I want to stop at yeah. this point since we did find Athena. And each god or goddess I run into is randomized, <clears throat> so I have to stop now where we might not get her again for a long time. One of the cool things about this game I like a lot that you'll notice immediately is that here Athena is a black woman. Mm -hmm. Which That's true. is an awesome choice. And the development team, I read an article about this the other day, they had this like eureka moment in terms of diversity when they realized that the Greek gods merely means they are worshipped in Greece. Not that right. they are all of Greek descent, necessarily. 
And so yeah. it, they felt freed to be much more inclusive than the original design doc for the game had been, which I thought was awesome. So then I guess <laughs> we should uh, bring up the new Cleopatra that has been announced. Mm. Wh starring Wonder Woman. <laughs> uh, and how there Linda been... Carter? <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? Yes! Uh, I want that. I will... Shut up and take my money. <laughs> But Honestly, I don't have a problem with Gal Gadot in the role, for what it's worth. Me neither. Uh, I initially saw that and was excited, and then I saw the outrage. Um, and Cleopatra is just a... She's a complicated figure. We More recent Egyptology has uh, speculated that she was not 100% Macedonian Greek, that she may have had um, mixed parentage and, and been possibly up to 50% Egyptian. Um, but certainly, like, as, as I have said to people, like, I, I would rather we make a movie about, like, Hatshepsut, and then we cast an Egyptian actor like that. Nothing would excite me more than to see that. Uh, Cleopatra being, you know, this long history in cinema of being whitewashed, um, I think people have just always been like, well, she was Greek, you know? Yeah. She was Ptolemaic dynasty. So that that's kind of where I land on that. I do think that it was... Um, Here's given Ares, the by the way. Between Egypt and Israel, um, that's what makes this complicated. And yet no surprise for someone for me. born in hell itself. <laughs> the cat for the casting. And tell me all about it. The students of death, you see. So, the gods all think that I am journeying out of Hades, out of the underworld, to join them on Olympus. Ha, we'll, we'll get to that plot point in a moment. And you're like, I'm just going on Rumspringa, man. I'm getting out of hell so I can <laughs> see what else is out there. We'll see during playthrough two or three, uh, depending on how far we get, before I jump over to my completed file. Uh, Completed-ish file. <laughs> what we're doing here. I want to talk about the groove here. There's just a tiny hint during the downtime here. It's very quiet. All the traps are disabled. It's a good moment of respite before we jump back into things. Where things are going to pick up. That tambourine signals us that we're moving now. Ares gave me this very cool uh, new version of my dart, you'll notice. Athena gave me the... A block on the shield and that's how this game is mostly going to be going is each one of the gods will give me something to that's use nice. it's like in sleeping beauty when the fairies all give the princess a gift yes it's very much like that <laughs> and then maleficent is like your gift is gonna suck from me because y'all are mean <laughs> As to the question of how long a playthrough takes, this one is going to take me a little bit longer because I don't have any of the cool unlockable goodies yet, and I'm trying really hard to not lose so that we can do see the cool stuff for the first time. And I have to win on not my completed file to view what happens the very first time you finish the thing, which I would like to do on the screen. So I'm playing a little more cautiously than I normally would. Uh, one of the things you can do on a more completed file is set a timer as a means to increase the difficulty and I currently have that timer on my actual file set to seven minutes per world there are three worlds plus a half world and so you're looking at roughly about a half an hour once you start going this first one's going to take me 45 minutes or so because I'm not powering through I'm stopping to talk between rooms right we're kind of hearing the music ebb and flow a little bit more than we would if I was only playing to win okay the big guy needs to come here there we go Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a big soda person. Uh, I I'm a seltzer lover. Actually, if I'm gonna do something like that, um, I, I went through a big craft root beer phase a bunch of years ago, like when I was doing my master's degree, um, and I was seeking out all these really obscure ones. And I, I like a well-made ginger beer, so I like that that sort of thing. I like the cream soda, but. I I don't think I'm strong Pepsi 
I didn't take Dr. Pepper over either of them. Alright, that's what you get. Notice we got louder rock music for our boss room. And now we get the cool stinger for winning. So it is all dynamic okay. audio, it's pretty cool. In the name of Hades. Uh, I was gonna make tea and then I decided at the last minute to do hot chocolate instead. And it's a mint ooh. hot chocolate and it's very good. Ooh, yeah, that reminds me. I have one lonely pack of mint hot chocolate mix, which is probably a disaster goal right now. But it's there. It's probably years old. But I also remember that I have from Maryland um, apple cider pouches. Oh, apple cider. nice. That's, apple cider has been on the grocery list every time we've gone. I've just been heating up cups of it. Especially in the morning, because I also have the little uh, mulling spice tea bag things yeah. from one of the local orchards. So. That has been a move. I guarantee you at some point during the stream, I am going to get up and I'm going to go make myself more tea. The underworld's yeah. Power. So, in case you did not see me pick it, my slam is now twice as strong and reflects projectiles. So that's pretty good. Generally speaking, when you get a choice, you always want to avoid money, and you want to take like the blessing of the gods, regardless of which god comes up. More powers equals... Better than. Most I'd agree with that in the in the real world too. Like, <laughs> I'm, if I'm gonna get some kind of god blessing versus more money, right? If Ares was like, you could fuck up your enemies, or you can have an extra like fifty bucks, I would take the the former of those. <laughs> Enemy really fucking for the win. I don't really have enemies, at least not directly. <laughs> No, but if you could just make it so that, like, for somebody that annoys you, you could make it so their their socks always slip down in the back of their shoes. Ooh, yeah. Like, constantly. That would mm -hmm. be great. That's true. Uh, Patrick, you can only get 175 per money later. Right now, money's only worth 100 And that is not a full god boon. This is a brand new file. <clears throat> Most of I... you that would get used on are, like... People who don't use their turn signal to indicate a lane that they want to change lanes in the highway. <laughs> I would say that's like the most common annoyance for me. <laughs> Can I make a comment about the color palette of this game? Yeah. Yes. This green, do you know what this green is? No. This this is straight up Sleeping Beauty Maleficent green. It is. And yeah. it, like, the palette, the color palette of this game, all I can see is Sleeping Beauty. Once we get out of Tartarus, we'll leave the green for what it's worth. That's just this first area. That may be, but it's just, it's, but, it's yeah. screaming Sleeping Beauty to me. Like, Maleficent's, like, castle area, do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, that's just the the straight vibe that I'm getting in this section, and it's really interesting. I watched oh, that there. movie so many times when I was little, but I haven't seen it in decades. <laughs> I just always remembered that that, like, that aura of green around her horns, you know, was such a particular shade of green. And this has nothing to do with Greek music. Yeah. <laughs> I no, no, no. I, so Ryan posted um, a video on Twitter um, that had <laughs> some stuff from the end of the game, um, which heavily features English horn, which I think they're going for kind of like a Alos sort of thing. Um, well, pastoral, because, you know, all yeah. groups are shepherds, right? Right. Um, and so there, there's clear so illusion. The track from that, that video layered. is the moment you arrive in Greece at the very yeah. end. That makes sense. Um, so we, we will get there, because I, I believe Ryan has a save somewhere around that point. But I think a l there's a lot of rock in general in this soundtrack, isn't there? Yes. Uh, Darren Korb is a rock guy. Yeah. And the one time I have met him in person, which was probably like 15 seconds worth of time, was when we were at uh, GDC together some years ago. And I went to the Gang Awards while you went to dinner. And I happened to meet him there long enough to say, hey, thanks for doing Bastion, I thought you were awesome. And... Ooh, tough, but we'll do this. 
Uh, I told him that I use him as my model for what Aaron Marx's book advises new composers to do, which is invent your own mixture of genre. If you need surf rock, invent surf rock. If you need, like, alien space-sounding jazz, <laughs> invent that, right? And he has a lot of really eclectic stuff that's hard to definitively peg into one genre, I think. I like the, the connection in chat to 300 um, and the, the rock scoring. Good to see you, Karen, mate. Just minding my own business, taking in the sides. And I mean, mm. we're, we're doing spooky right now, right? Like, this is Halloween spooky. Right, well, it's, it's Karen, right? Look at him, right? Yeah. Maybe that could be my Halloween costume. I could be Charon, Charon, by the way, never speaks back to you. He just <laughs> grunts at you, which I think oh, is pretty awesome. I like that, Karen. I'm going as Kool-Aid, man. Here we've got... The present chamber lies the outermost perimeter this. of Tartarus. Promising Zagreus can sense the narrator's the presence and comments on this. Reckoning. And hmm. I can reckon quite a bit. Nice. Oh, also worth a quick note that Zagreus is voiced by Darren Korb, the composer. Cool. Who also sings the part of Orpheus. That's fun. That's a Got baller a move for a composer, by the way, to cast yourself as Orpheus. Yeah. Can, can we just bring in some Monteverdi? Haha, <laughs> yes. That's what I want to see. Come on, make it. Me Haven't too. We've more than enough of each other by now. Besides, don't you have some place else to be? Your father sent Man, I remember when I remember when 300 came out. You can turn back. What a sensation that was. I felt like I can you home it was everywhere for a while. What will it be? And I had read the graphic novel years yep. before. Um, this definitely has those types of vibes. I like, okay with it. I, like, I was definitely like, okay, you know, I read it and then I like moved on to the next graphic novel. It wasn't like one that I adored. <laughs> uh, and then, But then the movie I thought really matched, maybe even surpassed the... <laughs> There's material. kind of like sexual undertones in this conversation between me and the boss here, by the way. And okay. it's because later you can romance this character. That's an option on repeat playthroughs. Excited. We'll see here if I win here. That's a very seminar. That's exciting. I want to take all the summon. That's all. Nope, can I'm going to lose on the first time here. Dang. Yeah, I still owe you, Dana. I owe you a ton of material from all of mine. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I took one week of your uh, your seminar from the, the summer. It's true, bro. Yeah, last <laughs> last uh, spring for sure. Yep, here's death. Oh, was that spring? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was January. Ah. Yeah, I have the one email like starred and saved in my inbox. Like, where I'm gonna file it with the other ones. That's funny. <laughs> No, I'd be happy to. I'll send you my stuff on the the pop class too. It's it's. I'm, I'm oh, that would be great. I'm te I'm now like mostly teaching a pop class. <laughs> I've kind of taken it over a little bit. And uh, we are using. This We've got some lesser gods really quickly. Hypnos. We'll visit Hades in a minute. Achilles up here trains you. Despite the circumstances. Dan, who's the author? Uh, Larry Starr and Christopher yeah. Waterman. That's what I was wondering if that was the Starr and Waterman. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not using a textbook because it's not a pop survey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is this is a survey. Hi, Jen, I, I'd by love the way. to see like the readings you're assigning um, because really? I'm basically taking some of the ones that are taking it for college credit and doing an accelerated version. So I might throw some additional material at them. So a little bit. It I mean, bumped me forward, but... so I missed the chance to demo this, but it will come up oh, again. Good. Achilles' profile is translucent. You can see the column artwork through him, and Zagreus is solid because he's a god and Achilles is mortal. He's, of course, he's a dead mortal, being down in Hades. Mm -hmm. But it's a really subtle design distinction that I think works really well. It's fun. Also, you can totally pet the dog. It's a perfect game. Important. Just like in Spirit Fairy, you can, you can pet Daffodil. It's important. Yeah. Stupid hey Jen and Andrew and out of here well everyone. <laughs> I don't know that I formally welcomed y'all. Greetings, Father. My ransacking was a delight. Thank you for asking. So I'll just be on my way again. <clears throat> be on your way indeed. 
What do I care? You shall never reach the surface. Go. Ooh, Hades has some eyebrows and some mustache. I, I really love the design of Hades here, actually. He's he's got a lot of he's got a lot going on, like tentacle beard. Like yes. I I was thinking like Pirates Ooh, of, the, of the Caribbean, straight up, straight up like the the sea beard, the, the squid beard. Nyx here recalls Lulu from Final Fantasy X for me. Kind of gives me a death from Sandman vibe. That's legit. I just want to do squid beard. It's it mostly is. the eye makeup I and the pale skin. Person. Squid beard. Did, did anybody? I know I talk about this before, but yes, it's been a while. Is anybody else as big into Better Off Ted as me? I've hey, seen. Really? I, I saw a bunch of it with you, and then Joe and I watched a little beyond it, and then yeah, we. There's there's one episode where where I think. But I liked um, it. Phil grabs Lem, or Lem grabs I'll Phil, I forget which one is which, but they, like, grabbed each other by the face, and somebody was just like, I've always wanted to know what it felt like to have a beard made of fingers, and now I know. <laughs> and that's kind of what that looks like to me. Lol to his Yay. little, I'll sleep when I'm dead when you approach the bed. There we go. Because he is dead. The heart seeker. Let's deal some death. Over here. What the? All right. So now we've started our progression. I've got a bow now, which I actually prefer strongly to the sword. So now we have a reasonable chance here. One more time under the breach. And until I leave Tartarus now, I'm going to go pretty fast. Is this really him? Unless we find a new god to look at. The lightning bolt is, of course, Zeus. Look, your father's always been rather difficult, and he's not so much as called in quite some time. Go have a better home where you belong, here on Olympus. And to help you on your journey, have my blessing. I'm sure I'm sure I'm always pronouncing things wrong. Lord Uncle Zeus lending his support. If if the Greek gods didn't come up for me in like high school English. A few of them came up in Latin, but generally we had the Roman names. I'm not dead. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not as good with the Roman names of everybody. So, because I, I did I did four years of high school Latin, so and we we did AP, so we did plenty of that. But and my favorite Roman god is Robigus, the god of mold. <laughs> The god of mold? Yeah, you'd home. sacrifice a, a dog painted red to him. Uh, it was something about protecting the crops. Oh. From, from a particular strain of mold that was very oh. dangerous. I do not like huh. this. I do not like this at all. Nope. No. Yeah. Yeah. I just liked the concept that, like, of all the random gods of whatever, that, that one always seemed interesting. Like, what do you do all day, man? <laughs> I feel like if you've only managed to become the god of mold in the pantheon, you've been a you slacker. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you're just you're just like not an energetic person. You're not motivated no. at all. Like what is your deal? All the performance sure. reviews are like, you know, you're not really a go-getter. <laughs> yeah, no tenure for you, god of mold. The wine glass here is of course Dionysus. Yep. But Sarah PC thinks, uh, reminds her of John Oliver, which I think is very funny. <sighs> I'm excited. Hey there, Zagman. How's it going? Look, you have got to get here with the rest of us already. We've been saving you a spot. Let me see what I can do. Make life a little sweeter for you in the meantime. It's, it's in the bit. voice, right? Yeah, a little bit. Trippy shot. Sounds like we're at a bar. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't want the fog right now though. What I want is uh, nectar so that I have meaningful progress, even if I die, and more maximum health. Leave it to the god of wine to liven things up around here. Each exit has its own reward. Which is. Yeah, graphic novel adaptations really run the gamut, right? Because, like, the 300, I thought, was one of the better ones. Um, and then I remember when, like, some of the Alan Moore stuff started getting made, and he was so mad about it. 
because he insisted like his work was not translatable to the screen, and those m- movies did really well. I don't think they've, <laughs> they've held up as like great cinema, but they they did really really well. It's gonna mess. But one of my other favorite adaptations, I, I've always loved Delicious. the Stardust movie. Extra blessing. Oh yes, it's excellent. And that's one that, you know, they they changed the ending and they, they did a bunch of things and uh, I don't care, I love it. <laughs> I love the book and I love the film. And what a great score for Stardust. Yes, agreed there as well. This little well lets you shop. I'm not making enough money to do this yet. It's just not worth it. Oh, we get to meet a new god uh, next time. Haven't had this symbol yet. I think the other reason I keep making the comic book compare like the 300 and the comic book comparisons is this has a little bit of like a comic book drawn feel in the graphics. Absolutely, it does. For the yeah, isometric are... style, though, I feel like from a gameplay perspective, this art style is very readable with the gameplay involved. Yeah. Ah. Oh, and the, the color pal. The color palette helps make things distinct. Yes, it does. I didn't do very well against this boss, though. Things are not looking good for this room. That's okay. Must be a mess. Let's see. I'm liking the. I can't hear over the sound effects too well. Is it like a theremin in there that's going doing all the spookies? Whoa! I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming just because of the texture of it. Some <laughs> tracks have a voice as well. Here's Aphrodite. Well then, that's appropriate. And so. <laughs> I've decided I shall aid you for the moment. You interested? Right, it's an interesting balance between, like, the character as drawn is censored, but still clearly nude, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And again, I think it's appropriate for Aphrodite. Passion Dash, that's fun. (laughs) A different league. (laughs) Oh, I like the titles. Yeah, we're definitely doing the heartbreak strike, though. I was just going to talk sure, about how Septimus's theme is in 7-4. Andrew and I are on the same page. That I don't remember. It was like the second or third time I saw the movie. I was like, oh my gosh, it's in 7. And I was so excited about that. And whoever I was watching it with was just like, what? <laughs> I love finding stuff in, in unusual meters. Yeah, originally it's the sand it's the Sandman author. Sandman hasn't had much in the way of adaptation, right? I think there's been some like maybe a TV thing, but American Gods of course has been adapted and Everywhere had a really amazing radio adaptation. Uh yeah, Stardust is great. I think it, it, it really holds up to rewatching too. Mm. That's like one of those oh. instant classics for me. Hi, Julianne! Hey, Julianne. Let me finish hey. this room and we'll get you on here. Cool. Did, you fix your, did you fix your typo? I did. Good. <laughs> I mean, there's probably plenty of other typos, but... Fix the one. <laughs> yeah, a lot of my, like, I could watch this over and over again films are kind of silly things. So, like, Wayne's World, I kind of never get sick of. <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Back to the Futures, I'm, I'm always up for. I was but thinking Stardust seriously. Is in there. I was gonna have a Back to the Future movie marathon this weekend. That's what I'm Ooh, thinking. That's a good one. But on Saturday, I'm taking a class on shapegoat singing, 
so I'll, I'll back to the future around <laughs> Shake Noting. Okay. I want to take a class on shape note thinking. You can. Yeah, I never, I never had any exposure to it. Uh, all of you can sign up. We Is didn't it cover free? it in my undergrad, and I never got it in grad school. Really? It's through Amherst Early Music. It's at 3 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, Hold and on, it's like an hour and a half, call. and it's like 25 bucks. That's fair. And it's being taught by two very, very, very dear friends of mine who are awesome and fantastic. And I highly recommend they're awesome. Yeah, I have uh, my copy of Neverwhere That's is signed, signed by Neil, and it's, uh, it says to Dana, mind the gap, which is great. <laughs> nice. I'm sure he signed that to anyone who brought that book. So the signing that I went to many years ago, but I'm st I'm still tickled by it. Yeah, the radio adaptation of Neverwhere is so good. The cast is incredible. So just e echoing Dark Sword here. I haven't watched them in so long, but I was but I watched the um um reunited apart with Josh Gad where they did Back to the Future, and it was so sweet, and I loved seeing them all. I was like, man, I really, I need to watch the whole trilogy. I really do. They're and if you haven't, so if you haven't seen any of the reunited parts, please run to YouTube when the stream is over and watch all of them. They're adorable. Yeah, I uh, definitely have seen the first Back to the Future the most times of probably any movie in my life. Uh, as y'all may or may not know, my 30th birthday party was an enchantment under the sea dance. Uh, Ryan made a chip tune for me as a birthday present and sent it to the owners of the bar where the party was held. And so they fun. pulled it up as a surprise uh, later in the night when we were doing cake and stuff. I did not know that. Or maybe I did and forgot. And or I'm just a terrible friend because that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. Uh, I mean, it would be bad if Dana forgot, but, like, you don't have to remember that, Julian. <laughs> Hello, Molly. Julian, are you outside? No, this is my actual, this is my outdoors, but it's a picture. Okay, I was trying to be, it's like, too hot, hot to be outside. <laughs> it's too hot to be outside. It is, it's still, like, eight. It, it doesn't cool off in the evenings in Austin, at least not that I know of or have seen. So it's actually hotter now than it was like at noon. I cannot figure that out. It's it's sixty degrees outside right now, and that's uh, warm. It's forty one here. Cold. Actually, it's very nice outside All right, right here's now. A cool I'm an idiot, but usually again. it's the eighties. <laughs> very quickly, I've got to point out. A, I'm going to do better against the boss because I can just stay far away from her with the bow. That's really nice. B, this is the most broken bow I can think of in video gaming. Like, I get this for free on command. That's awesome. Yeah. And yet, <laughs> it's not the best weapon. All right. Yeah, it, it would drop down into the 40s today because we had rain and wind and it got cold. Good, now I can reflect again as well. Check it out. Let's talk to Charon here. Hey, good to see you out here, mate. Looks as though you've got some fine wares. Look at Zagreus trying his best. Fine wares. Uh, that's all you get. <laughs> yeah. that, these are some cool illustrations. Since I'm yeah. com I'm coming to some brand new right now in the moment. Oh yes, well yeah. you'll see all the others shortly. That fast food. Hold on. Wait, what was? Is was that like fries and a burger? It was. I could have bought that to heal myself, but instead I bought the uh, the dash shield. Oh, I didn't know you. this was like a promotional game for like Burger King. This no, 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 is a suggestive just, line. It's like Castlevania food. This is a suggestive Every line right she's here. got is suggestive. Yes. Lord. Your whip's not been all that persuasive in the past. Dana, there you go. Ha! <laughs> Maybe persistence will come uh. for both of us. Tell them that. Oh, we're getting raided. The party's 21. So many Hi. People. Nice. Welcome. Woohoo. Welcome. 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 If I was good at this, I would take a break and look, but I really want to finish this. Hold on. Welcome, everybody. I'll just, I'm not going to lose this time. I'll raise my up to say hi. Because I'm going to 
be a giant chicken with my bow. I did not know. <laughs> burgers and fries in the Agora. Yeah. Burgers there. I mean, burger. we we have a concert venue in Cleveland yeah, called the Agora. Oh. And they I'm pretty sure they have burgers and fries at the Agora, so Andrew's not wrong. I'm agoraphobic. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, wow. Rated with a party of 21, and only one person is looks rageful in the chat. So I'm pretty upset. Yeah, normally, <laughs> well, normally we get spammed with like the emotes and stuff. Give me some emotes. <laughs> Hey, special anxiety. I mean, honestly, it's working out for us nerds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is wait, it hold working on. or is it just something we live with? <laughs> We've become accustomed to its face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There we go. Not impossible. One boss Theory down. Theory vanquished. Teach me the way. Hi, Phoenix Orchestra, folks. <laughs> How do I vanquish well, my theory? You all right. have to block Twitter, block Facebook. Um, I already do that enough as it is. I'm pretty good about that. PPD oil or whatever. Yeah, I'm pretty good about it. So too. now we get a reasonably big heal, which is nice. Well, now we have the the seltzer. Karen, didn't you try that? The, oh. Yeah. You don't have to get the oil. You can just get the seltzer or whatever. I don't know. Like, you could have just told me that that was bad tasting lime seltzer and I would have been like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so not great. Okay. No fury yeah. vanquished. <laughs> don't, I don't really feel like there was any vanquishing of fury happening. All right. So now we're going to leave Tartarus. And moving on. Hopefully, if I don't win this run, I might jump ahead to my actual save file so I can showcase a completed run before the end of the night. But I'm really hoping to pull it off on this file. We'll see. Here's Asphodel, which is your traditional hell. Mm -hmm. Right? Rither of Fire. There's a little viewing spot you can go in each one. It'll nice give us this nice vista. It's nice and warm. Out. It's nice and warm. That'll give it that. LA. <laughs> uh. The once verdant plains of Asphodel are now engulfed in scintillating flame, having been flooded by the yeah. river Phlegathon. Legathon. <laughs> That's not right. one I remember from high school English. That's amazing. Legathon. <laughs> like every morning before I break, take my allergies. Right. Yes. Legathon. So, gameplay wise, the the magma slash lava here will kill you. You can't stand in it very long. You start just draining HP. Hopefully Usually we're going to not do it that for any length of time. So the fact that he can is <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So who are we? I actually don't oh, know. Sorry, Julian. We are Zagreus, son of Hades. Oh. That's Addy reminding me to close the door. I'm in the middle of this combat. I cannot close the door. Was right like, now. was that my notification? Or what was no, it's me. <laughs> Hold on. All right. Now I can go close the door. I'll be right back. I just get Molly pawing at the door if I leave it closed. Cats do not like closed doors. All right. And we are Zagreus, I'm convinced, largely because there's not a lot written about him in story. So he's kind of a blank slate Greek character for Supergiant to write That's themselves. Cool. Yeah, I... Yeah. All right. Don't want to accidentally lava myself here. We'll go this way. And then this was said earlier in the stream uh, by Ryan. Uh, the developers had a, a breakthrough where they realized that uh, the gods themselves didn't have to actually be Greek. Um, they just had to be worshipped by the Greeks. So they they have a, a really diverse set of gods. Oh, nice. Which cool. is cool. Yeah. Ryan, 
Jin, do you know why Apollo isn't in the game? No, I do not. Uh, Jin is asking. That's a good question from Jin, and I don't know why. Eventually you can buy, and on my file I'm about to buy it, a sundial for your room where you can, uh, where you can, uh, tell time so long as you can see Helios, that arrogant asshole. And so, <laughs> he's also not in the game, and I wonder if being associated with the sun, like, there's not a lot for Apollo to do here, per se, right? Like, compared to some of the other gods, right? Aphrodite's power to influence, for instance, becomes relevant here, right? I can weaken or charm foes. Uh, I agree the biggest omission is Hera. And I think Demeter largely fills the role that Hera would have filled. But more on that when we see her. We will not see Demeter at all, by the way, until we switch over to my file. She is not available in the randomized pool at the start here. Well, the music that I can hear is very cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm liking this one. Yeah, our battle music here. Sorry, I don't have a lot of time to comment on it. This is really cool. I think it, you, there's definitely some fire level, fire level vibes going on. You've got electric but, guitar. But I like what I'm hearing. Uh, I'll ask the annoying question. Is there a way to turn down sound effects relative to music volume? Yes. Yes. Because this is the problem I keep having with a lot of the games we're playing, where, like, obviously, your combat has to be very active. All right. Um, like we had with FF7, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't even hear the music. <laughs> yeah, I can fix that. There we go. Yeah, that'll be really helpful. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so notice how our, like, even hey, our calm music, music is very... Now our calm music is louder than it was in Tartarus, because the bass just still goes... All right, we're gonna go check out what Dionysus is gonna give us from this boss. The money pouch is the shop, and I just do not have enough cash right now. Like the barge of death. You can eventually unlock the ability for these random urns to give you money, but until you do that, it's really hard to get enough money in any given run to shop. This is so much better. I can hear the music. Yeah. This feels very Metallica. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it does. <laughs> this is straight wherever I may roam. <laughs> Ouch. Shit, I forgot he drops on death. Not low, it's grease. <laughs> <laughs> wherever, I, wherever I may grease doesn't sound right. <laughs> that sounds dirty. Yeah. That's me and my chicken dinner I had tonight. The fried chicken. Whew. I've been making all of the autumn dinners. I did pumpkin risotto on Sunday. It was that awesome. pretty good. Yeah. I topped, all right, I put a little bit of blue cheese in it, and then I topped it with uh, rosemary marcona almonds. Nice. It was glorious. In the name of Hades. Mm, hey. All right. Uh... Sound, I think Soundgarden's appropriate, the, the tone of that guitar. Yeah, that makes some sense. I'm definitely taking After Party now because I'm low on health. And yes, the names of all of the boons that you can get, <laughs> and there's around 25 for each god, uh, are awesome. Yes. Up close, my lightning bow, by the way, got really strong after the last boon. I don't know if you guys saw, 
but the lightning effects have a chance to hit twice now. And mm -hmm. there's seven lightning bolts every time I press the button, so... As long as I can close distance, the damage is going to start racking up. It's pretty exciting. I mean, the catch is that it's far safer to do it the other way, right? Juliana's finding the base. There's just not a lot in the normal encounters in Asphodel. It's kind of just not emphasized, which I think is fine. Ooh, I wanted darkness, but we'll get the key, because I don't want another boss fight for sure. There's a little bit of aim assistance, by the way, on the bow. I'm not landing every <laughs> shot perfectly. As long as I just press the button, it'll give me the targeting I need most of the time. This is a game for a roguelike game. There's a lot of emphasis on the plot. The game clearly wants you to experience it in a way that's just not familiar to this genre very much. But it's extremely refreshing. <laughs> right, I'm hoping we... No, nope, not yet. What do we got here? Centaur heart. Thanks, team. No, I did not do that. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> now we have to fight boss number two, which means we missed uh, Eurydice this game. That's too bad. Maybe next time. This is the Bone Hydra. Oh, great. And I have a bow. I don't have to get close to him. So I'm gonna win. I like this boss a lot. There. Okay, but is the soundtrack available? Oh yes. Oh. Yeah, I would rock out to this. I would. I am digging the spook vibes from that ceremony thing. <laughs> yes. I will, I will donate money. To, I will do the thing and donate money and not just stream for free. Rock, rock. Okay. I do try to support my creators. I really like the music for this fight. And it's not yeah, as hectic good. as Meg's fight, so I actually have time to, like, take it in and... Nice 7-8, eh? Right? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Which is, like, very Greek. <laughs> it's I mean, very... I hear, I hear Metallica. I hear the sound garden oh, that somebody was saying before. Quite clearly. <laughs> oh, 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 we're gonna get out of the way. Not now. exactly Greek folk music, but... Little yeah. audio slave. That resonates with it. A lot of harmonics minor. Ooh, and... about the history of rogue legs. That's exciting. Ooh, nice. I will be able to learn a lot because I don't I don't really play a lot of roguelikes. Ooh, yeah. Well, it started with rogue. That's all I know. <laughs> and then every other game was roguelike. Which I know it's not that funny, but I think I still think it's like the funniest thing. So I'm officially Hades weird. would be a rogue light, right? Because it's not a Berlin definition rogue game light. at all. It's not turn based, for instance. There's not true permadeath because I can make meaningful progress. I got one upgrade that's actually going to enable me to play that I haven't had to use yet. But in case you didn't see what it was when I was in the House of Hades, I've got some tricks up my sleeve this run. It didn't start with Rogue. See, look, I'm learning so much already. Now that's even better and even funnier. Oh, it's like Metroidvania as a genre title, you know? <laughs> yeah. Alright. Now we're in the final phase of the boss. His shield will go away. He's gonna become upset. And just bang a lot. 
then he's largely going to stand there and die. He'll do that every once in a while. I just hide. And I'll just shoot him down. I guess that's the argument I was trying to make in my uh, Cleopatra chapter. I... I was trying to argue that... I'm thinking uh, of that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, like, how soon can we say, like, JRPG though. stuff was stable enough that, you know, we can have something that is not following that tradition? Um, You're going and nowhere. And affording it? Yeah. yeah. So here I can dump boons I don't need anymore. But in all honesty, I want all of these right now. So we're not going to be doing that. And I, I basically copped out. Uh, I mean, I kind of agree with it, but I was, basi I was basically like, Dragon Quest was so big. Yes. <laughs> that was essentially what that argument, because uh, Steve, I think, was the one um, who was like, well, how can you, you know, some of these games hadn't been out that long. I'm like, dude. The Fields of Elysium. Dragon Quest was huge. The rare heavenly yeah. splendors of Elysium. That was basically, and I and I think I put that in the footnote in slightly smarter terms. Spread forth luxuriantly all about the fire-stepping prince. Luxuriantly? Really? I love that he makes fun of the narrator. All right, here, we'll go visit Aphrodite. I can tell it's gotten cooler, because most of the summer Molly has not wanted to be on my lap while I stream. She'll be in the same room and, like, kind of bugging me for attention, but now she's, like, right up in my lap, purring. Right sword. That eyeball, is that him? What a good cat. To, to speak to chat following what tradition I was talking about um, like musical scoring conventions um, essentially stuff like you know town themes sound like this world map themes sound like this things that like we take for granted so much that like there's not even a single publication that we all point to we all just sort of, sort of agree by consensus that yeah. there are features uh, there are people that are working on tropes and and Getting In the spirit of showing but... Julianne all the profiles, I'm going to give Aphrodite my one nectar so that I can uh, bring her up her profile, because this is the second thing she'd give me otherwise. We don't have a conversation with her. Lady Aphrodite, I am truly blessed. But you can start giving purpose, stuff so this to the gods. Oh, cool. And cool. this is the first level of giving stuff. Lasting relationships are built on reciprocity. Oh, wow. So if you lavish me with gifts, why, what am I to do but give you something in return? Yeah, we mentioned earlier, Julianne, Aphrodite's the most egregious, but, like, she's also Aphrodite, so... Yeah, she has to be. Also, with her transatlantic accent, kind of. <laughs> right. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Olympus, I accept this message. My name is Aphrodite. Ooh, I don't want any Ooh. of this. Gross. I guess I'll take 10% damage reduction. All right. Your boon was seeing that illustration of her. That was the boon. You can eventually get a poster of her on your bedroom wall as Zagreus, which I think is hilarious. Oh. <laughs> it's like he actually becomes like an emo teenager. Like he has the poster of the girl on the wall. I like that he has autumn leaves on his head. Or whatever that is. I just saw like red and yellow. Like the, um... Yeah, it's yeah. definitely like a laurel on his head of some sort. Yeah, that's kind of thing. <laughs> All right, I do not like the butterfly balls of doom. I mean, who does? So hold on. There we go. For me, pomegranates are awesome, though. Yeah, I mean, I think certainly JRPG music was working within the ships that were available when those games were coming out. But I think there's also something to say about kind of broader media uh, mediation of like safety, you know, is, is going to be tonal and 
and stable and uh, a lot of stepwise motion and like all these things that we associate with town yeah. games. So like a lot of that plays out in JRPGs. Um, in more obvious, it, it's just that it becomes more and more obvious because like movies don't tend to have to have like a world map theme in the same way. Like, you know, you're going from point A to point B in the narrative, but you're not going to be wandering around that map over and over and over and over and over. Um, so like video games have these, these areas that are kind of uniquely, maybe not uniquely, we mostly associate with them. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of my dissertation kind of argues that stuff like stepwise motion and like safe kind of themes also doesn't just come from some sort of universalized whatever. But the thing about video games, like universalized perception, co human cognition and evolution and whatever, but video games actually help to stabilize certain tropes and certain like cognitive metaphorical representations of. Like, we don't really, we have concepts for safety and concepts for, like, danger um, that come from playing video games and come from hearing certain associations. And some of them are very, very, very odd and very specific to certain games, but they certainly influence our musical knowledge and musical perceptions going forward. So the idea of, like, stepwise also sort of relating to sort of safe, like, easy tiptoeing steps and that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. You're not going too far. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of generalizable beyond video games, but there's also like kind of some other kind of weird stuff. I actually used like the jewel for an example of like, like the glockenspiel as symbolizing danger in a very specific way and like how that becomes a generalized metaphor. So, so anyway, while we are talking so about like what specific <laughs> metal bands we're drawing from, if we had Soundgarden earlier, here we have like something between Pantera or Alice in Chains, which is really coming to us vis-a-vis -vis yeah. Doom 1. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Ouch. Okay, they're gonna keep spawning as long as the butterfly ball is alive. So basically, in my Cleopatra chapter, it was either the genre wasn't established enough yet uh, for this to be a thing, so the fact that this doesn't follow what we think of as these conventions isn't a problem, <laughs> or uh, no, those, those things were conventional almost instantly because of how influential they were. <laughs> Which is kind of like yeah. a bold statement, but that's the one I went with. <laughs> But I was also arguing that, like, regardless, regardless of how established some of those tropes were, um, though that ah, immediately gets rewarded the do. second yeah. you set a game in ancient Egypt. Um, generally, like, we just default to we're going to score Egypt with all these kind of exoticist tropes, um, and so yeah. that that takes over any of the like the ludic functions that that music might have served. So that that that's like. Yeah. Now you don't have to read the green book. Uh, you can read it in <laughs> my colleagues' chapters. Uh, but you can get mine because that's basically my whole chapter. Uh, <laughs> you have a lot of transcriptions that are very useful resources. Well, thank you. I think I think transcriptions are my favorite. They make me feel like I'm actually a music scholar. <laughs> when nice. I do, they, they really feel like like some like I'm doing good work when I do a transcription. Hey! Right. Like, like labor. <laughs> like, I agree with like Sagrius butterflies. I, I 100% agree. And if I if I stray too far from the music, I like I feel like not right about it. I just I don't know where I had this like internal rule of like always you always have to start from a musical argument and then you know you get to the identity study that I usually end up taking it to, but. But there are definitely people that, uh, Will Gibbons is a great example. He can go an entire paper without playing a musical example, you know? Because he's so he's more interested in how people use music. And, and that's clearly like a result of just like different approaches or, you know, training, upbringing, <laughs> different music departments.
and probably my focus on like the musical content also comes from the fact that I don't have masters in musicology it's in performance so like I, I've always been more actively engaging with music as performed too so right. sorry I'm not much for engaging in this debate by the way I really want to at least make it to the boss of this third stage because he's no super annoying and I hate him and this is why you have co-hosts the uh it's the personality <laughs> that I hate and so I'm really excited to introduce uh the boss to all of you there is no hero, only Zool. One of these years, and it's not this year because pandemic, uh, I want to do Dana from Ghostbusters, but that orange lame dress is a pain in the butt. How, like, where do you find the fabric to make that dang thing? Um, the, <laughs> hair crimp, the hair crimping is easy. Oh, I've looked. <laughs> I mean, you can buy, like, really crappy ones that people have made. Um, but I would make that dress myself. It's not, like, very intense. It's just kind of draped, you know? It's not much of a dress. Yeah, Jin, um, the boss to this zone is literally toxic masculinity. And I'm kind of here for that as the boss. Yes. <laughs> well, that seems accurate if it's Stasius. Yeah, I, I've always wanted to do that. Go to the nerd bar, go to side quest, and, you know, there is no Dana, only Zool. Like, I, I have to do that costume in my life. <laughs> and the hair crimp is the easy part. It's just the dress that holds me up. But side quest did say they're going to do some kind of virtual costume contest this year, so at least I'll get to enjoy all the professional cosplayers trying to win gift cards and things. Ah, nice. Usually the winners uh, of the group costume, since it takes so much effort, they win like a theme so night of their choice. Oh. And so, and it'll be like open to the public generally. Um, so like the one year the group came as like a Mad Max, uh, mm. they, they were all the characters in Mad Max and they, I mean, they looked like they stepped off the set. That's and awesome. So then, of course, their their theme night, they did like a post-apocalyptic night. But that, that you know, the decor, uh, there's usually a cosplay contest at the event. <laughs> and then all oh, of like, the so they come up with specialty cocktails just yeah. for that night. They are they always have like clever names. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so that's like, that's usually the, the uh -huh. highlight. The single costumes are always amazing, but like seeing who wins the group costumes. Although one of my favorites uh, was the year we had three people do um, the monster cereals. They were Blueberry, Frankenberry, and Count Chocula. Oh, that's extremely That's legitimate. adorable. And it was Love adorable, it. and it was so good. <laughs> Back at Durham, we always sang, um, we sang a uh, All Hallows Eve service. So Halloween couldn't be too raucous because we had to go and sing in church like late yeah and so we'd always have this big halloween party beforehand and of course there was a little drinking or whatever have you but you know nothing that would make you incompetent for singing the service later and we would get in costume but then you'd have to uncostume yourself or wear your costume under your robe mm -hmm. so that mm. led to some interesting situations with costumes and there was one year where a bunch of the folks decided to dress up together as all of the obscure characters from sesame street nice it was great so then there was one uh two of my friends that went as like the two-headed monster mm. and it was adorable they were great and the the whatever you have of the meepies with the big nose maha mm -hmm. whatever they are i don't even know the yip yips yeah, the Yip Yips! Oh my goodness, they're my favorite. We've had some really good Yip Yips at Side Quest. Uh, I think that's that's a pretty easy costume to make, but it, it's always a crowd pleaser. Oh, maybe that'll be me this year. I'll just be a Yip. I don't even think I could be two Yips. <laughs> I think I'm just one Yip. Yeah, I'm going as Kool-Aid Man. It's going to be great. Right, this should be the last level or so <laughs> of our third stage. I just have to not die. I have to get some foam core board and some paint. I'm going to paint like a brick wall um, and cut the foam core board, you know, so I can pull it apart and be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I am coming. 
first, <laughs> like, I want to be... I want this We're to be up. open to anyone. Well, we should be, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's a, I think they're doing a virtual like, version this year, so... Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of virtual versions of things, by the way, in case you did not see me or uh, the other folks posting about it on Twitter, AMS After Dark will be virtual this year, and you do not need to register for the rest of the conference to come. Yay! Yay! I mean, I already did, but that's cool. Then and it's because we are unofficially... Like, we're not affiliated with AMS. We just yeah. are people who go to AMS that do cool stuff. And that's <laughs> what we're choosing to remain doing, right? Uh, I have an absolutely have baller idea for a proposal, by the way. The CFP should be going out tomorrow, so... Olympus, I accept this message. Yeah, some of the, like, going to the side quest Halloween, I remember the first year, I was like, oh, this is going to be so fun, I love costumes, and... I'm trying to remember what I was the first. Oh, I was I was Cleopatra the first year, because <laughs> mm. uh, that's where I'm. That's where I met Joe. That was the first side quest Halloween I'd ever gone to. Nice. Um, he was dressed as one of the bartenders, <laughs> and his best friend Eric was dressed as the owner Sam. So they they were wearing like normal clothes, but they looked exactly like them. It was so good. But uh, that's my strength. I remember thinking like, oh, I, you know, I, I kind of get into costumes. Um, and then I saw the caliber of like, oh, these people are like cosplayers. <laughs> yeah. they, they know how to like make their own armor. <laughs> That's how my, my right, annual so Halloween party is Here's the boss like of Area 3. We're going to get a fun conversation as we meet them the first time. Oh, wow. Hold, fiend. You'll walk not one more step toward the light what of day. What is happening in the chat right I now? Here. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Lots of quotes from Ghostbusters and nice. some edits to them. Yeah. I mean, we were doing Back to the Future and now we've switched. So, I've got to fight Theseus and the Minotaur. Asterius is really awesome, by the way. You get to meet him as a solo character later. But Theseus sucks. Absolutely hate him. Theseus, a bull of minnows. You two are legends. I'd be honored if we had a sporting contest here. Sporting. Ah, a <laughs> naked attempt to sway me from my convictions. Uh, he said naked. <laughs> he said naked. What a tool! Look at that tool smile. Yeah, he's got an ass hat smile. He absolutely does. Yeah, that's a comfortable face. And the the stance too, with the hands on the. Like, Ready yourself. Cower all you wish. My What's really annoying is he blocks everything. Like this fight is legitimately difficult because he makes you stand still long enough to figure out what he's gonna do, and then Asterius just comes and wrecks your stuff. Audience. So we're probably gonna die here, but that's okay. If I win this fight, I can absolutely finish the next one. This is the big block. And if you're not super geared, like my advanced files are, you absolutely want to fight Asterius first. Yeah, I'm getting my teeth kicked in. I love DeLoreans. I've gotten to sit in them at like various nerd events. Like actually there was a side quest party a little bit before the Halloween where I met Joe. Um, he was apparently there and he saw me and he remembers seeing me but we hadn't met yet. But uh, they, somebody that just owned a DeLorean like brought it and let people like sit in it and take pictures and stuff. And I was like this is so cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Ever since I was a kid, I was so fascinated by the doors opening up. Hey, random question. What is the word for this particular view? Like, this sort of three-quarter length? Isometric. Oh, ew. 
do not like that word. Like that either. <laughs> Why are you angry at that response? Yeah, I'm not angry, I said ew. I said I was grossed oh, I... out by it. Why are you grossed <laughs> out by that word? I'm not grossed out, I said I was felt generic, too generic. Right, I do not oh. want to lose. You have a lot of nerve pills for but little else. I hate that Theseus, like, now. taunts you while you're okay. fighting him. Like, shut the hell up. Yeah, some folks aren't into costumes, I don't think. It's like, if you want to do one, go for it. I usually start planning mine, like, absurdly early in the year. <laughs> oh, there so, it is. Because I, I have been known to put in some pretty ridiculous work, like my duck hunt dress. Um, I dyed it, and I, I painted... Every, like all the pixels. Oh, I want a rematch now. And then, of course, oh, I walked around something. carrying the the light gun. Bestowing on them all their worthless blessings here within my realm. <laughs> Our realm. Explain to me how. So exactly Hades gets pissed. He starts to figure out that you're getting help. And the mm -hmm. best part of this game is that when you die and reset back to what is effectively town, there's a ton more plot to explore. Every time. I'm on run 70 on my main file, and I'm yet to repeat things. Which is incredible. Do not That's fun. My power, Hades. We are going to jump over to that file so I can finish it, though. The initial goal is to run out of the underworld and meet your mom for the first time. Persephone, of course. Aww, that's why you're trying to get out. Yes, and the Olympians don't know that. They don't know where she is, uh, because she has left the underworld here. And she did not return to Olympus. She's just decided she's done with gods. And you have to go about changing that. On your 10th finish of the run, successfully, you finally hit the closing credits. And you need something like 30 uh, runs after that to trigger the epilogue, which I'm still in process on. Blood and darkness. Do not speak to me about their influence. For now, though, Hades gets real mad when he finds out that A, Nyx is helping, which she is, and B, that I'm getting closer and closer. You would speak to me of foolish mistakes. You cannot change the course I love how, like, unfazed she is, though. Everyone else gets flustered by Hades. And Nyx is like, nope. She's night incarnate, man. I'm night incarnate. Some sort of special offer. She also has a pretty good makeup line. <laughs> Hellenic shroom. Not authorized. A fountain chamber in the depths of Tartarus sounds like an excellent idea. What's that there? Something from the fates. Oh yeah, you can start mm. unlocking lots of progress, including eventually releasing Orpheus from prison. He'll sit here. Mm -hmm. In fact, why don't we pop over? Sorry, no giving up allowed in town. Mm. Okay. You notice I've had 58 escape attempts total here. Oh, and we will uh, oh boy. give up on this one and Excuse start me. anew. Did anyone ever play uh, John's to see if the music was any good? No, that I did not. Yeah. We need one to, of the best though. trailers I've ever seen. <laughs> Clearly we have to uh, bring it. When we move from Greece to our Philadelphia-themed... <laughs> what will be the other half of that night? <laughs> John and what? Maybe maybe city themed. Mm. Or city like, themed. Okay. We know, do city a themed. Lot of cities. So Hades so is not here right now. Uh, Persephone's sitting around there. I can't talk to her right now. You get access to a like lot more spaces. You'll notice there's a fancy portrait of me up here. Yeah. Aww. You're famous. I am famous. My, new, my current task is to uh, do one more run, which we're about to do on this file, and then explore this room to find one specific scroll. Mm, look at that. Looks like the Chicago library. This is the administrative <laughs> chamber. Zagreus Including sucks in the paperwork. There's a flashback where at some point he just <laughs> has to do it. Some mortals don't believe in ghosts, but I believe in you. Good Aww. job. Aww, look at 
Look at that little emojis that popped up over their head. That's better than he usually does. So Some, sometimes when you go in there and click the inspire button, he's like, at least you're not working with me. I suck at this type of stuff. Wow. That's funny. You unlock this cool lounge space where you can flirt with Meg and uh, do awesome. some other things. Nice. Our bedroom now oh. is more extravagant. Where the magic happens. Exactly. See? Poster. Is that an Aphrodite poster? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> giant, wow. giant, giant Aphrodite poster. <laughs> I am giant le I'm liar. learning to play the liar. Oh, dear. Practice. Or yeah, practice makes get perfect. Better. Well, see, I don't actually know, but if you look at the list of prophecies from the fates, you saw I could have bought that on the original file. Uh, where is it? <gasps> is it the musician one up top? Look, the gift of song. Learn to play the lyre through training and practice. Oh, yes. and I don't know if that just means go over Halfway there and press decently. right bumper. Halfway decently. It says that you have to get the teachings of a solemn master of the art. So you have to find somebody. I'm assuming what I need to do is reunite Orpheus and Eurydice first. No. Which is on the to-do list. In fact, let's uh, so, hop right to that. Yeah, Karen, go basically, ahead. Basically, what you're saying is that this is Jin's project for next semester. <laughs> yeah. For the Monteverdi seminar. Nice. Your whole paper, uh, your whole semester could be on this game. Once you finish the game once, you can add conditions to make it much harder. Oh, fun. Which I need to do in order to get more rewards. So we're going to bump up things and give us a time type timetable to work with here. Seven minutes is not actually that long if you start moving. Have some nectar, Athena. You, Lady Athena. And during all the cool cutscenes, we would want to stop and debate things. The timer stops anyway. This is an unexpected gesture, cousin. I do appreciate it, though please do not feel obliged. I offer you my friendship, not a loan to be repaid. And we still have to talk to her to get our normal buff here. Cousin? I want the special move buff, and I got it. Let's do this. Some of the weapons you unlock are stupidly good. This is one of those. I just won't lose at this point. Ringers. Papaya is pretty great. So we've seen this before. I'm just gonna get through it as fast as possible. Partly because I'm now on the clock. Let's see what else. I eventually gained the ability to alter the, which rooms I get. I didn't have that originally. It lets me build a more efficient final build. God for us to see. That's good. Fun. Oof. You're not gonna get. You don't get the flu shot bi-weekly, right? You can just get the test. Why you can get flu shot injection combo. I like that Flatter. Artemis wow. wants to get it on with Achilles, and they're both the green people. The green people. All right, what are we getting from Artemis? This wow. Time? We are getting uh, the dash strike, I guess. My senses sharpen. 
Don't need any of that for now. Ugh. Now I'm annoyed that I forgot, but maybe I can get Joe to go to like a Walgreens or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hit, hit up a Walgreens because we both, even though like we really don't leave the house, we should both get it. It's been heavily recommended to me this year in particular. I was okay. gonna say, yeah. Oh, I want to go visit Poseidon, but if I'm gonna win, I need to get the hammer. So we'll hope he comes back up again. I can force him to appear shortly after, nice. if uh, not right <laughs> From now. From Hubble Flu Shots. Yeah, that is what I need. Somebody to just come here. Rock and roll. Yeah. Mm. That's a moon time. Oh. In the name of Hades. Somebody's getting hungry. I know. Yeah, poke, poke mates did not work. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a good valiant. It's bad in several ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing. <laughs> God. Yeah, so, it, it seems like you notice I had to charge health to go in this gate. It's because there's a bonus hidden god here. It's chaos. Oh, my fave. Now, now that's a Halloween costume. <laughs> Borg voice. I love it. This is so Jap like JRPG with like the multiple faces inside. He's totally Whoa. JRPG last boss, isn't he? Giant. The, yes. Like, One of the phases, for sure. It's yeah. not he, though. Yeah. Uh, Chaos is they, them, and it's explicit about... Uh, they are explicit about that. Really? Uh, yeah. The first time you speak to them. Oh, Makes nice. sense. Why, what, why would Chaos be either or? Right, chaos is chaos. not limited by gender, and I think it's in right. those words, uh, precisely. Yeah. That's so baller. Right. That's some chaotic good. Actually, I don't know. Is is chaos good or evil? I don't want any of this stuff, but we'll take that. I chaotic guess. neutral. <laughs> For the next Halting. four fights, I cannot attack or I get hurt. I can Halting only lunch sounds like shield my workout routine. <laughs> you have a workout routine? I'm so jealous. <laughs> I no, keep writing some exercise. I'm like doing this every day, and it's always like. I was pretty good at it up until like the last two weeks, and I just, oh god. Yeah. I've been taking some walks, but nothing, nothing too extensive. Yeah, I need to uh, definitely get back into more of that. That's what we're gonna chase. Oh wait, I can't attack though. I'm dumb. Okay. Uh, Poseidon, sweet. We'll go meet Poseidon now. We're not gonna go down that hellhole, literally. I must remember, no attacking, only shield throwing for the next four. I mean, that's where all of this build's damage comes from anyway, so it's okay. Side and have some Hold nectar. This here is for you. Would that my father were as easygoing as yourself. Poseidon's pretty awesome. The show of generosity for my most I love the nephew. crazy beard. Yeah, and the hair. I, I like that. I also like the pose for him, like he's just chilling out. All the artwork is absolutely fantastic. It's very nice. Yeah, I mean, this is, I, it's a, it's a mixed bag, right? Because going to hybrid made a lot of people very nervous because our numbers weren't looking like they were getting so much better. Uh, so it, it's 
kind of nice that it's happening before anybody went back. Um, at the same time, it would have also been nice for administration to just be like, you know what? We're just gonna stay online this semester. <laughs> You know, and, and just do something that doesn't make the teachers have to constantly switch modes yeah, yeah, and yeah. plan new delivery. And I mean, they've been working for a few weeks now about okay, we're gonna we're gonna go back. This would be like their second quarter. Yes. Okay. This is the Artemis boon I wanted. Sorry for interrupting. Yes. So, <laughs> like, it's kind of a good thing that it happened today and not after they went back, but at the same time, like, now all of these things that just got planned, like, all those hours have been wasted. <laughs> you know, those people are mm -hmm. like, okay, how this is going to be. So, I, I'm just, like, really tired today because my poor students, are they're suffering so much from it, you know, to be in high school in particular, I think is well i'm sure any age is struggling but the ones uh, that i'm seeing they're just so burned out that doesn't yeah. surprise me at all it'd be really rough k-12 right now notice how her comments to me now is she longs for a fairer fight remember how i upped the difficulty uh in the menus she is aware of that and is eager to have a fight that she thinks she can win i've been since pitying you isn't one of them uh i've been winning against meg for a while now you fight both of her sisters randomly as the replacement first boss as well after you've killed her a couple times. She seems like she would be very unpredictable uh, in a romance setting. <laughs> Exciting, but certainly unpredictable. So you'll notice that every time the shield spin hits now, I fire a homing arrow at my target that does more damage still. Uh, that's the Artemis thing I really desperately wanted. And my Chaos Boon is now done, so I can attack again too. We're looking very good going into Tartarus here to finish this. Yeah, I really appreciate schools that gave, gave a lot of choice and then didn't make that a fake choice. You know, there were schools that were like, okay, who wants to teach online? Oh, just kidding. So many of you wanted to teach online. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> they, like, took it back. <laughs> yeah. And said, well, if you personally aren't immunocompromised, even though you live with people who are, you know... But, <laughs> yeah. It put a lot of people into really impossible situations. And what I think is really frustrating for these high school students is there's not a ton of choice for them. So they can't, they could opt to go completely online, but it's like an, an online high school. So they wouldn't be working with like their own teachers. They're basically completely separated out for the whole year if they opted to do that. So a lot of them didn't like, a lot of them didn't like that. Yeah. So then they're at the whim of the distance saying, well, now we're going to go to hybrid, and they can't say, well, no. Stay dead. And then as soon as they set up the hybrid schedule, it's like, you know, half the students are in the building at the time, and then Delicious. they, like, rotate days. Uh, as soon as they set that up, they're like, okay, A through K, last names will come in on this schedule. Then you get people saying, well, that doesn't work with my parents' work schedules, or my sibling has a different last name than me, and they're in the elementary school, so I have to be home when they're home. So, <laughs> so like, yeah, no nothing was following any kind of, like, consistency. Long, so get and when you've got 2,000 kids in your high school, like, that's, that's a mess. <laughs> Here's our second romanceable character, is Ooh. we have Meg you can romance. We've met her as the first boss. Now we have Thanatos oh. as Death. I mean, Death Incarnate's pretty, pretty fun. That's pretty cool. <laughs> You're gonna have a competition with Death right now uh, to see who can kill the most stuff. Uh, if you win, you get bonus health though, so I really, really need to win. <laughs> He's gonna get that one. 
Oh no, ha ha ha, still me. Haven't you learned your lesson yet? I'm a total winner. So there was some mention earlier that folks on that this game is a thirst trap and that there's a lot of folks on Twitter reacting. Yes, everybody wants to get it on with all of these characters online. I, mean, I, 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 I haven't so far, but like, good, good for y'all. Good for y'all. Except Hermes. Uh, Hermes doesn't do it for me. <laughs> All right, what do I get from Hermes for my troubles here? Andrew, that's not a really good sell of like helping out. Chris. <laughs> yeah, to help me, me you gotta help yourself. Let, let, me, let me take on too much for you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Oh, we what get would a make dual. You feel better is knowing level. that you are taking care of yourself. I agree. I am gonna be making it and do just fine. Everybody take care of themselves as they need to. So. I'm pausing because I'm on a timer. Do we want Athena or Poseidon? Or oh, Poseidon. Sure. Oh. Dana, you must split the decision here. Uh, in, okay. in terms of what? Who we're going to fight? No, which bonus I get. Uh, Jin says pick Athena. So. Yeah, go with Athena. I'm going to be mad. I do oh, not okay. need more revives. And I get both buffs anyway. Well, there you go. What I do need, though, is a cast that does something. So I might either take that or I might... Uh, we'll take this one. Holy shield. The other god is going to be pissed at you. Oh, man. I mean, I would take your offerings, too, man, but the game won't let me. The game will let you. You get both buffs in oh. this room. Except, now I have to fight a room full of enemies Sorry, while Poseidon is fighting me. Oh. Okay. okay. So do you see the water thing kind of making its way around? Yep. I think it was Patrick in the chat that said that Artemis will F you up if you don't pick her. That is absolutely the case. Now you get the bonus. Yeah, but Spock, Spock dies, Andrew. <laughs> Spock dies in that movie. All right, we're actually going to take Poseidon's aid to summon Poseidon into combat. Even though the other two are epic buffs, that's the one I really want. Uh, I have a cast already, but I don't have enough money to shop, so we're going to get Ares anyway. Here we go. This is already shaping up to be a successful build, by the way. I'm not worried at all about winning at this point. I remember it was what 2015 that Leonard Nimoy died. Um, I, w I went happened to go to SideQuest the night that he died, and they they put Wrath of Khan on the TV, and everybody's like sitting around the bar crying. I'm like, why are we watching this? Yeah, that's a terrible decision, man. Like, watch yeah. anything else with Spock in it. Why are you watching this one? I'm friends with his niece. That's cool. It's true. And once she said it, I was like, oh god, you can really see the family resemblance. That's cool. I never would have just thought it out loud or recognized it, but the minute that she was just like, yeah, Uncle Leonard, and I was like, oh, yup, yes you are. That's so great. Yeah. Right on 
cube. That's also like why the, why you know you know I talk so reverently about this bar is that like people go there to build community with each other and it's like it's it's so much more than just a place to buy alcohol. <laughs> you know all these events and you know seventy five percent of the staff is trans. Like it's just like a you, you oh. feel so good when you're there. I was <laughs> hoping like, and hoping and hoping like we'd get this like, randomly and we did. Check this out. Yes, I get a break. Music. Oh, some music. <laughs> That's nice. You yeah. might recognize <laughs> Ashley Barrett's voice from Bastion and Transistor. Yeah, let this play a little bit. Yep. repeats from there. It's so good. It's pretty, yeah. Normally she has something to say to you when you see her. And watch when I talk with her. Hey, welcome back, your royal majesty. You're just because it's her singing, of course, the rest of the music continues, but the vocal drops out. The attention to detail here is fantastic. Yeah. Hmm. Churchy solemn responsorial, not in a bad way. I like that. Oh, you can buy treats. You get free treats, and they're all incredible stuff. We're gonna go with, you can get four different pomegranate buffs simultaneously. You just don't cool. get to choose how to assign them, but still four rooms worth of awards is great. The next three boons you find from the gods have upgraded rarity guaranteed, or the one we're gonna roll the dice on, two boons you have are upgraded. Again, you don't get to choose, you're rolling the dice. Coming right up. But we got... Wow, that's good. Quick reload, and we got... Ah, uh, the Poseidon call is better now. Then she's back to singing her stuff. Mild and warm. Mild and warm. Alright, I gotta... Pump Orpheus full of more nectar before I can do anything else to these guys, I think. That is certainly one way of putting it. Take care. That's one of the cooler rooms in the game that you can get. There's one special Greek figure. Uh, this is awesome. Yeah, we're gonna do this. There's one special Greek figure in each uh, stage. We have not found Sisyphus in Tartarus, even though we've played through that three times now. And you can find Patroclus in uh, Elysium. I've done this enough, he's no longer the Bone Hydra. Now he's Lerny, the Bone Hydra. Ah! this fight that took a fair bit of time investment the first time. Uh, the upgrades matter a lot.
that's a once per chamber sort of deal, but it's good. Kaboom! Gives us two seven-minute levels to go. From the magma fishes. We're just about done. Let's see if I have the, I got one. the timing. Haha! I caught something. Good, good, good. Uh, more rewards for me post game when I the lounge space has a cook. If you bring him fish, he'll give you stuff. It surpassed my mic drop. Need any of that? I'm not really in the market to sell anything from this build. Onward we go. That map looks like the one that they'd have in Emperor's New Groove, which is ironic because that's my backdrop. Blue seems so pretty. <laughs> this level's the hardest by far, though. It is nice, though. this off I'm trying to go my authority. to maintain my tempo as well as I can here. Let's see. I don't know what I have that knocks away people. I think it just have the one, right? Yeah, I don't have anything that knocks people away. This is a stupid set of buffs. Bum, bum, bum. I guess the Poseidon call? Uh, sure. Since I mainly use that for bosses, we will kill bosses with it more. This, I need Skull 15 to get in there. I've not even come close to having that much in a run yet. Don't know that I'll actually be playing the game enough to get there. This is difficulty 6 right now. I did forget that urn, though. Rats. like that Artemis is super reserved and not confident as a goddess compared to some of the others. In the name of Hades, she's offering an exchange.
Hi, Jarrell. Oh, here, Hello. I'll go get the gold this time. So check it out. We do get our third uh, bonus character room. Yeah. Well, what's it going to be this time, stranger? The Hydralite? Maybe he gives you cool six. stuff, too. And he is involved with Achilles, just like he is in mythology. We need to eventually work to I'm reconcile sure those two. Stuff, sir. I really appreciate but, it, but Zagreus is always concerned about him because he's always down in the dumps. Oh, come. This is Elysium. Taking such things for granted is the point. We gloried shades receive our stipend of the finest goods, so we can battle to stipend. But I've already had my fill, I think. <laughs> stipend. We didn't, none Glory of us saw shades. enough of those. That's grad students for real. Stipend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> of minus. Oh look, now we just get to fight Asterius alone. Come on and fight. Zagreus is alive, short one. Come on and fight. Zagreus originally takes exception to being called short one because he's the same height as Theseus. Some people are sensitive about that. He just trudges off. Yeah, it's kind of like stomping off like he's mad. Right? <laughs> Alright, should be two more rooms than the boss if my count is right. Chariots are actually... I don't like finding them, honestly. Because they make me move around a lot, and there's a lot of traps here that I need to kind of just avoid, like the exploding AoE stuff. Or more importantly, these soldiers will stab you if the room is active, and they're hard to see. See if Hermes will give me the buff I want. Oh good, a lot of Sorry. Oh, it's been me the whole night. I can't keep my eyes open. Yeah. I'm, I'm on the struggle bus right now. Trading, yep. non-attack, too. <laughs> well, not only are we almost through the game, we are almost through uh, to 11 as well, so... Yeah, it's been a long semester, hasn't it? It's been a long year. I haven't even been teaching and I'm still feeling it. <laughs> Yeah, Jin, not every night, oh lord. <laughs> every night. Sweet. Yeah. It pushes the limits for me sometimes on bedtime. <laughs> Feeling it today. Yeah. I often, right after the stream, kind of collapse into a heap. 
Hello. Oh, I go straight to bed. No Look, lie. This is my 50 something <laughs> run through this dungeon, and he's still an ass hat. I fear I shall develop some respect for you. Get fucked, dude. <laughs> I have such fear myself, Theseus, though I appreciate you noticing. You're quite an inspiration, you know. I, wouldn't I love I've no such fear game. myself. Yeah. <laughs> to be destroyed, you mean? I see you, plain monster. You seek the glory of this fight before this crowd. You yearn for it. Then you shall have it. Just yeah, definitely ask that energy. <laughs> Dude, shark attack. So good. You'll notice Minotaur is already half down. I'm doing so much more damage now than I was when I was fighting on the unpowered file. Here's the problem, Theseus is also blessed by the gods. So when he gets down to half health, he picks a random god. This time it's Zeus, as you can see. Which isn't so bad, even though it looks fizzy. If he draws Armitus or uh, Demeter, you're pretty much out of luck. Let's remember, too, to that Theseus' story is basically that Ariadne is in love with him, and she helps him with the, the whole labyrinth and the Minotaur, and then he friggin' leaves her there! Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, he's a dick. Oh, speaking of which, if you wander the crowd, you see all the posters for Theseus? This is, like, his arena. There's yeah. one little shade. That was for you, good shade. With a tiny little Zagreus poster. Aww, that's <laughs> cute. Now, granted, there's god meddling, right? Isn't it uh, Athena, I think, tells Theseus to just, like, wake up and leave. But, and, and like, the so-called happy ending is basically Dionysus thought Ariadne was hot, and so, like, oh, just leave her here. Dionysus is going to come check her out. And then she can go on eternal spring break. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, come on. And then of course there's the whole thing where he he puts up the wrong he puts up the white sails instead of the black ones. So then his dad commits suicide. Like, dang, it's a dark story. Yep. So it's no wonder that we're just uh, being true to his. We should stock up for the road ahead. His ass hat nature. Pump power. Ooh, Andrew's blaming Julianne. I feel like everybody. Everybody tweeted incorrectly about when we were going to finish that that game. Not me! <laughs> Maybe. You'll notice that Cerberus know. is in my way, by the way. Hello. So I've got to go through these caves, which is not as long as any of the other stages, as you'll see shortly. And I've got to find uh, a distraction for Cerberus. You don't actually have to fight your own dog, because why would you do that? Cerberus <laughs> is a good boy. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Can you pet him, though? Yes, you can. You can pet him. Zagreus in the house of Hades will, like, cuddle up to him. It's very Oh, awesome. that's right. You showed us that earlier. But it's random which one of these is, like, the that's end. This is the final sense. chamber. You can tell it, it is because the music kicks in.
understand what uh, this message Athena has for me. To be fair, I think a lot of the misjudgment of where we were in FF7 came from the fact that, like, they added so much to the original game. <laughs> so, like, right. storyline-wise, we were close to the end, but we didn't realize just how much had been <laughs> added to fill that out. Yeah, I agree with that assessment completely. <laughs> Ooh, I'm finding lots Aww. of money in these chambers, which is good. Having to get stabbed. That's so sad. We're coming up on 11, by the way, but I happen to know exactly how long we have to play this time. So, yeah? the end is yeah? near. Or is it, like FF7? it is not like FF7. Oh, oh that was just stupid. Hey, Look, here we're done. Already. We'll take the satyr sack. We'll get our boom. Oh, man. Oh, okay. Sorry, Ayolan. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's not the game. What, uh... I don't need any of that. I should get the heart if I was being responsible. But we're not going to do that. I just want to finish. I'll take it. I'll take a 2% buff there. Yeah, art design has really been on point. I love the the color, the use of color. I like a game that doesn't shy away from really saturated so color. Again accepts the yep. sack. Hi! I love oh, about to get the, the portrait for Cerberus bad. here as well. Mm -hmm. And then he's treated like a boss. Look at the text that comes up. Oh, bye. Cerberus stuffed. With food. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's a different message every time. They very, very rarely repeat. I think there's got to be at least uh, 15 or 20 different messages. And here we're finally outside the Temple of Sticks and on the surface of Greece. And who blocks our way, even after the ending? I mean, it's the name of the game, right? Well, you all should have probably seen this coming. Of, that I have to fight Hades to clear out of here. It seems our realm has many witnesses. I shall deal with them shortly, then. He realizes... That voice sounds really familiar. It's Logan Cunningham, the voice in Bastion. He is also the voice of Zeus, so you've heard him a couple times. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the first time you come here, he realizes you're out to go find Persephone. If you win that fight, he, as he's dying, he just says, Tell her the dog is doing well. <laughs> and then dies, which I think is really nice. Yeah. Uh, this time they account for the idea that I have to repeat forever. I am testing the Underworld's uh, defenses here. So I have a plot reason to be in cahoots with him at this point and to continue to play. Good. He's down. For the first time. And now I've got one last life.
water power. <laughs> It's a review of the build that I've got, so if you care about the gameplay stuff, you can review and track and post a screenshot. We've got rewards to pick up. Normally, this door would go to Greece. I've already finished it ten times, and you noticed I already have Persephone now back in the House of Hades. So instead, it's this very comical thing. The clever-minded prince again eluded certain death up to a certain point. But then, predictably, made one of his fatal mistakes again. Oh. Get Cat, try to climb on my desk where she can't be. Go! I know you're hungry! <laughs> Why don't you ever bother Dad? Right, and now we're back. For Yay. the ending, both endings, uh, Austin, <laughs> instead of covering it on stream, because I don't have a file that has it anymore, Austin Wintry, who was brought in to orchestrate the two ending tracks by Darren Korb, they're good friends, uh, posted an awesome YouTube video with all of the sheet music to the ending that scrolls in real time as he gives notes about it. So yeah. for the ending oh, yeah, of the game, go see those, because that video is going to do just a much better job analyzing this stuff than I am going to be able to do real time, even if I had time to talk about it, which we don't. The only stuff that sounds Greek to me, we're not going to play it. <laughs> we can play it on stream to close us out. I think okay. I'm down with that. So How let me uh, it? bring it up here. <laughs> it is this. This piece serves as Persephone's theme in Hades and plays primarily during Zagreus' time on the idyllic surface. The introduction of orchestral textures is meant to differentiate this piece from the rest of the game's sound and strongly associate this piece with the surface slash Persephone. I'm reading because the text is really tiny. Austin writes, Darren is a dear friend of mine and someone with whom a collaboration like this has been a dream for years. I'm incredibly honored to have played a role in helping to bring Hades to the finish line. This recalls Will Roger's work with Lara Croft for me, by the way. Thank you for that. <laughs> English porn, yay! The Did way this worked, wrong? Austin is oh, writing, yeah. the way this okay. worked was that Darren wrote the piece in its entirety with the specifics of the orchestration loosely described. Because Darren doesn't have a background in orchestral writing, he approached it generally and was open to suggestions. Nevertheless, his first pass was very strong, so most of what I did was clean up, along with subtle alterations for adding color and texture throughout. These trombones are an example of where I finished out what Darren's sketch indicated, and made them my own choices on the specific voicings and voice leading. The melody and harmony are fully Darren's. By the way, the color palette of the game when you finally arrive to the garden right about at this point in the music is no longer Sleeping Beauty green, but lush, gorgeous, lit green grass by the sun for the first and only time.
can see it in the background, actually, underneath the music. You can see the color I'm talking about. Alex likes. <laughs> Pay a special attention to the flute and clarinet echoing one another here. That comes back in the second piece that Austin uh, helped to orchestrate to help tie both endings together. Incidentally, Zagreus dies during the conversation with Persephone right there because, like Hades, he is cursed. He cannot live on the surface. So he dies and goes back to the house of Hades. You have to visit her ten times to have enough of the conversation with her to oh. have a satisfying resolution to that plot thread, at which point she then comes home to the following piece here in the blood. get a combination of that nice orchestral aesthetic with the rock of the rest of the soundtrack and a duet for the first time between Orpheus and Eurydice. Also, I had no idea that Darren Korb could sing this high, this well. This is like A plus work. Holy cow.
better Twilight than credit scroll music. Oh my. Yeah. All right. If you've not followed Austin Wintry's YouTube series, like this, by the way, he covers a lot of cool video game music and puts up all the sheet music and just scrolls with comments and text, including some of his own work on Journey. It's a very cool YouTube series that you should probably go and check Mm -hmm. out if you watch us ever. Uh, Nice. It's just awesome Mm -hmm. stuff. In terms of it sounding like an OC remix, I... (laughs) I like that take because it does sound like they've just put everything into this one piece of music that they can. And even though it's a completely different musical style, if you'll permit me some indulgence here. Oh, come on. There's more than one. Why am I not? Oh, I'm searching on Twitch, not on YouTube. Ha ha ha, I left my own Twitch TV comments. That's smart. Hold on, I need YouTube, not Twitch. (laughs) And then I need to peace out and go to bed. I'm going to take all the heartburn medication that doesn't seem to be helping at all. (laughs) So, listen to this briefly. This is Shadow's theme from Final Fantasy VI. After, oh, I know this one. After some dumb ad, so hold on. Ugh. You don't pay for YouTube Red? No. As a struggling actor, I, do not. I need all the breaks that I can get. At Liberty Buchimo. Cut. Liberty Bibbity. Alright, let me. <laughs> there we go. Back to the beginning. Also, you don't just go. have the theme on your. <laughs> I know. Yes, agreed entirely. I think we probably said that when we played it all those years ago. So here is our original, what Julian described as simpler theme. And here's the overclocked remix take on that that I always think of. I, this is one of the few OC remixes, like, I really know. Okay, sorry, I had to resize the window. Here we go. This is, they've thrown everything possible into this <laughs> yeah. mix. This is Andy and Jill Aversa with Joe Zizia on Whistle, and, uh, holy cow, like, no, no human can actually do this except him, I'm convinced. Whistling is out of control. Yeah, Jarrell is right, Jeff is on violin. Just, I'm going to turn it down so I can talk over it. Just like the In the Blood piece uh, that kind of throws every style that we've all heard yeah. and mixes it all together at once, this piece takes the whole Final Fantasy VI album that Overclocked Remix does and shoves every genre they can into this one track at once. Yeah. That's like a good paper. So like this moment About here, too, like we change things up in a way that the original piece does not. I mean, overall, I hear it as mostly spaghetti western homage, which is perfect. But it's like completely not subtle. No, not it's not subtle in the slightest. It's like, let's keep a very simple tune, but every time it repeats, we can alter some stuff. But Still have such obvious like every everything about that style you can go into. Same with you. Oh. 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 Oh.
right. You get the idea. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there is a random Back to the Future reference there, yeah. Yep. We were to, and we opened the stream talking about Back to the Future and how great it is. The whistling really reminds me of Big Enough. Mm. The song that it was like meme territory for a while that has the dudes in the sky yelling. Uh, <laughs> if if you haven't seen Joe do everything uh, on YouTube, uh, you absolutely should. He is one of the best whistlers I know. He's one of the best clarinet players I know. <laughs> he plays guitar. <laughs> He sings. He is the voice actor of Claude Von Regan in Fire Emblem uh, on the Switch and a whole bunch of other stuff. Bumblebee and Transformers. Uh, there was the dude a is just the future reference. Sorry. Hyper capable. <laughs> so check him out as well. Uh, but that is Hades. It's my game of the year for 2020. Cool. Uh, so far. Again, we've got the new systems launching, but I don't know that I'm picking them up in 2020. So this might be it for me. We'll see. What are we uh, doing next week? Do we know? I don't think we know yet. We need to figure it out. I've got Cave Story in my back pocket to do at some point coming up soon. But I'm open to other ideas as well. The the four of us will have to figure that out. For sure. Everyone here should absolutely mark their calendars for Friday the 13th of November for AMS After Dark. Uh, (laughs) I have got the absolute best funniest idea I've ever had even Addie has told me and it's half her idea so I need to credit her uh, which is why it's my funniest idea so far <laughs> but I am very much looking forward to the fifth AMS After Dark uh, Matt has put this together five years as an unsupported grad student has put on the absolute best panel of the entire research community and should be given a whole F load of credit for uh, yeah. giving us a place to be ourselves at AMS <laughs> All right. all right that's folks. all we've got folks uh we are all Thanks. gonna black right. out from being tired now that's that's <laughs> yes, where <please>. we're at <laughs> good night all all right good night, good night. Too. we'll see you next hey. week